Good day, dear listeners. Steve Preda here with the Management Blueprint Podcast. And today's guest is Jim Padilla, founder and CEO of Gain the Edge, a sales service firm that, firm that provides you with top-notch sales teams, live events, and a hands-free sales process and system. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. Glad to be here. Great to have you here, and uh, I'm curious to learn about your entrepreneurial journey. How did your career take you to running a sales services firm? Well, um, you know, it started with me uh, having a, a bit of a rough childhood, and, uh, you know, I grew up in an abusive environment, so I ended up in foster care uh, when I was very young, and then on the streets at 16 and in jail by 19, and you can imagine all the skills you learn in the first 20 years of life when you have to read the room and recognize how to bend the will of everybody your direction so that you could stay alive, right? And you know, little did I know that 20 years later, I'd be making millions of dollars teaching other people how to read the room and influence people into your direction so that they see you as an asset and not as a threat. And um, so, you know, it, one thing led to another and it became, you know, sales training it was, an, it was a space, but then we got invited to provide, be a sales team, sales solution for a, a big, uh, you know, up and coming rock star in the coaching industry, Bill Barron at the time where he wanted, he didn't want us to train his team. He wanted us to be the team. And so we stepped in to do a million dollar launch with him. And all of a sudden, two weeks later, a line was at the door when we had people coming to us for the next two years, we did nothing but live events and launches where we were providing the strategy, providing the sales teams and making it go. And then people wanted us to stick around between launches and sell for them mm -hmm. all year long. So then all of our systems and strategies and processes lent itself towards building sales teams, building sales systems. And, you know, eight years later, here we are as uh, you know, most loved and well-respected go-to solution for sales teams. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between selling in a launch and just selling between launches in general? Yeah, uh, it, there are two different animals. Uh, selling during a launch or an event, there's a defined journey. Whether it's a three days, seven days, 21 days, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's a high volume of activity, big increase. It's like a red carpet activity. There's stuff going on and everybody's, there's increased emails, increased activities, increased communication, a lot of energy. Everybody starts and stops at the same time. And so sales, you just have to navigate the gaps and create that and continue the conversation mm -hmm. versus an evergreen environment where you have to create all of the activity. You have to create the excitement. It's ongoing every day. Things aren't changing. So you have to create the level of energy. You have to create a beginning, a middle, and an end for the client in that journey, as well as for the team in that journey, so that there's some energy and a, and a clear finish line to get across. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like uh, sales through remote control where yeah. you don't actually are in control. You're hoping that you are in control, but you don't exactly see what's happening uh, in the distance, whether the, you know, how hot the sales prospect is, how engaged they are with uh, wanting to buy what you have, or, or do you have some control over that? Yeah, well, you do. You have a lot more control than you think. Uh, you know, number one, if you have a really powerful um process that leads people predictably towards an intersection of making a great decision, then you're really narrating that entire journey. And so the more, the better the offer is, the more well refined your avatar is, and the more well curated the prospect journey is, then you're not necessarily controlling the process, but you are absolutely um, leading the, in, in, enhancing the environment to lead to the most ideal outcome. And at the end of the day, you just want them to make a great decision whether they decide to stay in the, in the struggle that they're in, or they decide to stay or to take on a new path by solving the problem. Either way, you want to make it, create the environment that leads to them making a great decision. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So, uh, so Jim, you developed uh, a, a blueprint for, for sales people, which you call the Rainmaker sales system. Uh, so my question is, what prompted you to come up with this system and how does it work? What does it do for for, for you or for salespeople in general? Well, it's interesting because we've been doing this for, for years, um, but I recently named it that because somebody wanted me to do a talk to, uh, on, their, on their event uh, and they said, talk about how to hire rainmakers. 
And they said, well, that's interesting because we don't hire rainmakers. We hire level 10 humans who are level seven salespeople as a target. Um, and then we create a system that produces rainmakers. And so we decided, let's name this the rainmaker sales system. Um, and so what it is, is basically creating all the things I was just talking about. You create a system that delivers a well-enriched, well-seasoned, well-positioned prospect who is looking for what you sell and you package an offer that is a can't lose offer so that a good salesperson can sell it. Not, or you don't need a rock star to sell it. So the system itself becomes the rainmaker so that your sales team can just serve, right? Because if you don't have all that, then you need rock stars. You need rainmakers and they're not as easy to come by, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to, you, the founder, to have to do all the selling. So we want to replicate you or remove you from the process. So the system itself is what creates that. And you know, there's just six steps to it, really simple. But when you have, you need something to sell, some, someone to serve, something to say, right? Uh, something to solve, somewhere to go, and something to stand for, right? And something to sell is a compelling offer, not a good offer, not an okay offer. Your solution is probably world-class. The way you package it sucks, right? It, 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 that's just most people in general. Mm -hmm. So give it a compelling offer. Make sure it's irresistible and can't lose, right? Someone to serve. You need a very well-focused avatar who has a bleeding neck problem. If they don't have a bleeding neck problem, that means they're not ready to buy, which means you have to now convince them more that they want to buy or that they have a problem we're solving. Okay. Something to say, you need to help them create a, You need to create a great core story that your sales team can step into and sell, right? What's the journey that they're on? What is the thing that everybody in your ideal avatar is, is struggling with, right? And then of course, the bleeding neck problem piece. Again, you have to make sure the problem is something that is urgent and needs to be solved. A curated prospect journey, which is something that step-by-step step leads them towards saying, wow, I'm going in the right direction. This makes sense. Every time they open an email or click on something, it should make them feel like I'm in the right place, right? Um, and then a mission, right? What great mission? You need to give them something to stand for. What do your, what do your sales team, can they stand up and say, yes, we help people become bulletproof. We help people lose weight and in, in, uh, get the body that they had when they were in high school. Or like for us, we help, you know, we, we create a business that's designed to make revenue in any economy, right? We're, we're, that's a fight. That's a mission. That's a battlefield that our sales team is on. Our whole company is on. And when you're in that, you enroll people into that journey, right? So that's, you put all those together and you've got a rainmaker sales system. That's fascinating. So a rainmaker sales system, does it work in any industry or there are specific industries that lend themselves for emotional appeals uh, that really are uh, suited for that? You know, that's, that's, that's a really, really astute point. Um, even if you're selling paper clips and widgets, at some point people buy things because it solves a problem and delivers something to them because our the part of our brain that makes decisions doesn't process logic it only processes emotion when somebody gets onto a, a website to push a button even on an e-commerce product something inside of them is feeling better about the decision that they made their life's going to be easier they're going to make more money their wife's going to be happier they're going to be healthier something is going to happen so you're still embedding that in the journey. There just may not be a, you know, there maybe there's not a conversation that has, right? So maybe the story and the journey itself is the conversation, but it exists as a short answer. It exists in every area, everything you sell. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be healthcare, uh, you know, health related or relationship or money. Because I read it somewhere that these are the three areas where, which really drive people and you, you need to look for a connection to one of the three or multiple yeah. of the three. So that's not necessarily the case. No, it's, it's important for all of it. Um, like I said, you have to understand what is the emotional reason that detail people like details, you know, cause too many times you hear, well, this is a detail buyer. This is, this person likes facts and figures. Yeah. But they only like facts and figures because it makes them feel confident. It mm -hmm. makes them feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. So your job is to help them get to that warm and fuzzy because that's what's going to trigger the signal to make them say, yes, I want this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So there's always a feeling involved. So you have to push certain buttons so that they get in there and the uh, story has to resonate with them so that they see, they, they can relate to that story. They can relate to the emotional triggers and then Correct. you can lead them down the to the past. 
you know, and it could be anything because you got to decide as the company is the pro is the problem that they're solving the bigger emotional trigger for them, or is it that you have such a great brand that they want to be part of your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe like a Harley Davidson, you know, that's it's a motorcycle, it's a product, it's an engine, it's a widget, it's parts, but it's an emotional decision because you get to be part of something. You get to you get to be one that has the wings. You get, you know, there's people who have Harley Davidson tattoos because they like to be part of the movement. I'm free. I'm limitless. I have, you can't control me, whatever the brand stands for. Right. So even though it's a, it's a thing, it still has an emotional attachment to it. So you decide what's the emotional attachment is that I get to be part of this movement. I get to be part of, I get to buy this iPhone and be part of that movement. Even if it's not the most incredible product, maybe it's not the most superior product, but they do a good job of making you feel like you're superior when you have it. Yeah, because you're different because you yes. buy an alpha. Yep. Or at least you think different, right? Um, Perception of value is everything. <laughs> yes, I love that. So, uh, so Jim, you talk about this concept uh, that the mechanism is the message. So is what you're describing, the different steps, is this the mechanism that has to become the message? What do you mean by the mechanism is the message? Um, well, can, we've kind of been touching on that. The, the mechanism is what are you using as a conversion tool? Are you using a funnel? Are you running a live event? Uh, are you doing a red carpet um, experience? Um, the thing that you're doing, you're, again, you're appealing to people's buyer fingerprints and everybody likes to buy a certain way. Some mm -hmm. people love to click. Some people love a handshake. Some people you know, get, get really excited uh, about being included in something like, you know, everybody here, I'm sure, you know, at least one person that every time the new technology product comes out, they will wait out over overnight in line, just so they can be one of the first 500 people who bought it, even if it wasn't any good, they just want to know that's their buyer fingerprint. They want to be part of the movement. They want to be part of the person that says, yes, I'm special. I got one. Right. So the mechanism that you're using to convert is the message that you're delivering to those people, right? So however you, whatever, how, whatever finger, buyer fingerprint, and it could be as simple as you're somebody who does live events. Like we do a hundred live events a year for our clients. We do a lot of live events. Well, where would you go? Where would be the most logical place to go find live event clients at a live event, right? They have a buyer fingerprint. They've already told you by their actions that they like to go to live events to get experience. Mm -hmm. So why, why would, you know, not that you can't find them online, but the first place you should be finding them is at other events, right? So promote to other event people who are running events for people who want to co show up to your event. And then the mechanism becomes the message. So the event is your conversion mechanism. The message is come and be part of our community. Come and be the first one to learn, be the first one to buy our new product this year, right? So you're using the event, the mechanism as the message to communicate to them as to why they should be part of it and what will make them want to buy it. Hmm. So basically they are enjoying a certain experience and then turn that experience into a sales attraction vehicle is what you say? Yeah, exactly. If they like events, then, then sell them through events, create an events that they're going to flock to and then use it to sell the product or service to them. Yep. And they will tell you by their actions, the things they buy, the way that they buy them, the mechanism they use to buy them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm a sucker for a great online deal. I love there's I love clicking stuff. I love Amazon for that reason. I go on and I click and I buy and I'm, you know, it just it makes me feel good to know that I can get the thing I want when I want it at a super inconvenient uh, mechanism, right? So I don't know if that's my favorite way to buy. I love face to face. Uh, you know, I like uh, I don't mind going to a car dealership and having a car guy sell me because mm -hmm. I like the experience. I like mm -hmm. the connection, mm -hmm. the mechanism, right? So they don't want to just message me to come to get the car because I get get the car a number of different ways. But if they message me, come on down to the dealership. We're giving away cider and right and hanging out, and you get to pick, you get to test drive the vehicle of your choice. Or they're selling me the mechanism that I like to buy from. So let's say if if I was to target uh, small to medium sized business owners, then I would have to research the kind of things that these people like to do, and use one of those as a mechanism. So if they like to play golf, then I I would use a golf event, for example, as a mechanism to to attract them to my service. 
Uh, if it fits for the audience that you serve, yeah, like you got to know your audience. Like we serve a lot of transformational leaders in our in our business. A lot of transformational leaders aren't necessarily into golf and sports. Now they would be into outdoor hiking and climbing and things of that nature. Um, but when I have, you know, when we focus on more corporate clients, much more of a golf centric type client. So what is the mechanism? What, how, what is the way that they like to buy? That's a big piece of the mechanism. What is it that you're, the thing you're selling, what is it most uh, likely? What kind of, what kind of, in, what kind of environment can you induce in creating that? Like we have a client who's a print, a print company and they have, you know, millions of dollars that they generate every single month from visitors to their website. What they haven't mastered is how do you keep people coming back to buy a second time? Mm -hmm. So they've mastered getting the mechanism of getting people in to click and buy. What we are now adding is a new mechanism of building a relationship to give them greater services over longer periods of time by building that relationship, right? But that mechanism that we're doing it is to create a relationship with those people so that they understand the value of the relationship with the company. Okay. That makes sense. And these people probably are... Um, are open to that because they like to maybe have relationships with other people and communicate in person or however, and then you're tapping into that. But if it was maybe accountants or uh, software programmers, they may not want to go to an event or have a regular call with a relationship person. They would yeah, to, yeah, that's uh, always interesting. And, and that's always it. interesting. That's a different kind of person and you got it. What is the mechanism that matters to them? If they know that I can put this amount of time in and get this amount of outcome, I'm interested in that, whatever that mechanism might be. So you don't focus on the event, which is something they may not like, but you focus on the leverage of the activity. Mm -hmm. So then now the mechanism of leveraging their time, effort, and energy becomes the message. How can we, in three days time, we can give you a year's worth of outcome. Now, now all of a sudden an event can be interesting to that person because the mechanism for them is the leverage, not necessarily the event, right? So it's all, that's why the mechanism, you have to message the mechanism, the levers of the mechanism. So that's great food for thought. What kind of mechanisms could there be for my target market, whatever it is? So let's uh, switch gears here and talk a little bit about scaling the business. So let's say you, you've got your Rainmaker sales system and you found the right mechanism and you are delivering uh, the story through that mechanism and you are attracting, you're emotionally triggering your prospects. They want to be part of the, the journey that you are painting. Um, now, that's great. So sure. what is the problem with scaling? So if, if I can do this thing, then I supposedly can do it as many times as I, as I want and then I can scale or, or are they challenging with that? Or, or is this something that people cannot do themselves? Well, the biggest challenge with scaling a business is uh, number one, first and foremost, the word has some connotations to it right now that seem to be not so positive. Mm -hmm. um, people throw, they throw negative images at the word scaling, like, well, how, you know, it's all about greed and money. And it's like, no, it, it's, it's not about, it's about getting greater return for the effort that you're putting out. You know, you, it takes just as much effort to build a six figure business as it does to build a seven figure business. Right. And I'm sure, you know, you, it takes just as much time, effort and energy to sell, to make a $10,000 offer as it does to make a hundred thousand dollar offer. Right. So it's got nothing to do with greed. It's about, it's about making wiser choices with the same level of activity that you're already putting out. And the thing to keep really in mind, I want to share this, you know, with, with your, your people, Steve, um, my wife and I got caught with our pants down, let's just say, uh, in 2008. You know, we, we were very caught up in the moment and we weren't preparing, preparing for the future. And I was doing a lot of transactions in my business that weren't ideal, but they were very profitable. And then when things flipped, because we weren't taking great care of people, we were putting people in the loans that they shouldn't have been. When rates went crazy and things went bad, we didn't have a loyal following. So we were out of business as a mortgage company. And so we were not able to take advantage of all the opportunities. 2008, we filed bankruptcy, we foreclosed on three homes. We, we lost everything. And I swore I'll never let that happen again. So we always want to be very, very cautious on making sure that we are poised and positioned, profitable in terms of resources, and very, very bulletproof in our sales process and our positioning so that next time an opportunity comes, we're prepared for it. And, and you, you're listening to this 
podcast, that means you're existing and, and thriving in business or hoping to. And we had just come through a two year weird time. And most of the people in your audience are fearful, scared, they're doubtful, they're anxious, they don't know what to do. They're very nervous about parting with their money and making decisions, especially as inflation is rising and gas prices are rising and all of these other things. And you must be aware of that stuff when you're marketing. You must be aware of that stuff when you're targeting. You have to talk to people more. You have to speak more clearly. You have to be more compelling. You have to be more understanding. You used to have to touch them seven to 12 times to get a sale. Now you got to touch them 18 to 20 times to get a sale. And if you're not the person who's going to do it, just know for certain somebody like me and my company will. And so we'll be taking those clients from you, not because we're better, just simply because we're there and we're more consistent and you have to be able to show up that way. So you got to do whatever's necessary to make people feel from you the, the level of value that you bring, the amount of care that you have have, the amount of concern that you have for your future, and the amount of confidence that you have in being able to lead them to their solution. Because even though the economy might be hurting, they still have the problem that they need to solve. They're just much more scared or resident, re reticent before they invest, right? So you got to do what's necessary. And scaling is part of that equation. You have to be able to have more volume because you may have to, you know, you may have to be able to sell more products at smaller prices for a season. You, you may need to, in order to touch people more often, like our sales team, you know, they got to call people three, five, seven, nine times now. And that wasn't the case before. Now, before it was two or three, right? And that stuff, it all costs money. Everything you're doing costs. So you need to be prepared to build more resources and revenue so that you have, you have all the, the, the necessary um, jet fuel to drive your business so that you can be front and center for your clients and for all the people that you serve. Okay. Scaling's you know, scaling a must. So how does one do that? How, great question, right? Um, that's just the, the million dollar question. The first thing that you need to be very well aware of is that you have to, everything you're doing right now, just plan a minimum, map it out and plan to do double. If you were going to do two webinars, do four. If you were going to do one email a day, do two. If you're going to do one, uh, you know, five emails a week, do 10, right? Just start doing more. You have to be able to show people that you're consistently. Here's the three things that I, that we have uh, this determined in the last two years with COVID and all of that. You need to deliver more love loyalty and lift love. You got to show people that you care about them. Loyalty. You got to say that, Hey, look, I told you I was going to be here. I'm still here. I told you I was going to send you that resource. I sent it. I told you I was doing that webinar next Thursday. I showed up on Thursday. Right. And then lift love, loyalty, and lift lift is, it is your job to bring them up is your job to whatever resources you can provide for them are actually going to solve problems for them and bring them up out. Give them your best stuff for free and they will buy more. Be, give them your best stuff. Show them in your marketing and in your messaging that you can solve their problems because then that will give them, that will instill in them love, loyalty, and lift and they will make them stick around longer and want to buy more from you. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. So the Rainmaker sales system is a way uh, to essentially uh, tick all the boxes. So somebody to sell, something to sell, somebody to, uh, uh, somebody to uh, serve, to serve, yeah. something to say, uh, something to solve. I'm probably missing something, the mission. Somewhere to go and something to stand for. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so you, you need to have uh, these steps. You need to follow these steps. You need to uh, appeal um, emotionally to the customer. There, uh, you have to find the mechanism that your prospect wants to have as a journey and use that mechanism to, to, to appeal to them. Um, and then you have to scale your business. You have to run faster and work harder and be more consistent is what I'm hearing from you because of the recession or because of uh, the noise or because of the pandemic. I don't know why, but, uh, but I get it. You have to be more intense. So if people would like to learn more about uh, what you can, how you can help them uh, to, to create that intensity or to master the Rainmaker sales system, where do they go? Yeah, um, I, I will actually I have a gift I will give you. Um, it's a tool that will help you walk you through each of these six components so that you can have that set up for you. Um, if you want to go to my personal website at jimp360.com, J-I-M-P, 
jimp360.com. It is my personal website. You can access me on all of my social medias. There's videos about me. There's You find out how to work with us. You find out how to work for us, all of that. But don't do all that right now. Right now, just go there. At the top of that button, on top, there's a button that says contact. Click the contact. And at the top of it, there's a text button. Shoot me a text. Give me your name, your full name and your email and say Rainmaker. And we will send you the tool. I will text you the tool, the resource for working through your six steps of this of the Rainmaker sales system. And the reason that I'm offering you this is because I'm trying to build a relationship with you. I'm trying to demonstrate to you what I want you to do for your people. You'll be able to reach me, be able to answer any questions for you, and we'll send you this Rainmaker sales system tool to create that. But uh, check me out there, Jim P360, all of my resources in one spot. Fantastic. Okay, so check it out, jimp360.com. Jim, thank you for sharing the Rainmaker sales system. And uh, the mechanism is the message. That's a really interesting concept. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. And for those of you listening, uh, stay tuned. Next week, I'll have another exciting entrepreneur coming and share their management blueprint with you.